Ever wondered what it's like to be in the world of cloud computing? Well, you've come to the right place. Hi, my name's Jordan, and for this brand new tutorial, we will be talking all about cloud computing. Let's go on to our module first and discuss the basics of cloud computing. In this module, we will be covering the following areas. One, what is cloud computing? Two, why cloud computing? And how does cloud computing benefit you? Three, different attributes of cloud computing. Four, deployment models. Five, service models. Different phases when applying cloud computing. Different technologies in cloud computing. Architecture in cloud computing. And infrastructure in cloud. So, hop onto your seats as we take flight into the world of cloud computing. What is cloud computing? Some might think it is a cloud in the sky that is able to compute, but on the contrary, it is not. Cloud computing refers to the delivery of the demand for computer services on the internet. To put it simply, instead of managing the services on the collection of data centers on a local device, you will be doing the same in the cloud, but through the internet. Now, in summary, cloud computing is where you access, process, and store data and applications on the internet. A short history of cloud computing, it started in the year 1950 with the execution of mainframe computers and reachable via static and thin clients. On the scalability between on-premises and cloud computing, you will pay more for the on-premise setup, and once scaled up, it's difficult to scale down and could lead to significant losses in infrastructure and maintenance costs. Unlike cloud computing, you will only pay on how much you use and it's much faster and easier in provisioning when scaling up and down. So as we discussed earlier, cloud computing is where the storage is on the internet. The difference between cloud computing and on-premises setup is that the on-premises setup needs a lot of storage and needs to be maintained. It will also require you to use a power source to keep it up and running. On the other hand, cloud computing solutions offered by cloud service providers maintain and manage the servers. This will save you money and space. Cloud computing is user-friendly in terms of data security and has better security with the convenience of less management for data losses Cloud computing has robust recovery measures to avoid losses while ensuring fast data recovery. Lastly, it can configure and access the applications online anytime that you want. Now that you know the basics of cloud computing and why it is the better option, let's talk about the different attributes of cloud computing. There are different attributes of cloud computing. There are five to be exact, and these are broad network access, resource pooling, on-demand self-service, measured service, and rapid elasticity. Stay tuned as we discuss each of these attributes. Broad network access means it is available and accessible anytime. Resource pooling allows multiple occupants to access the resources. On-demand self-service allows users to log into the website anytime and access resources on demand. Measured service monitors and controls every aspect of cloud services. And rapid elasticity scales the assets horizontally and vertically. This means that the assets have the capacity to deal with the increase or decrease in demand. There are models and services that are working at the background of the cloud computing for the users to see. These are deployment and service models. There are different types of deployment models that will define access for cloud computing. These are private cloud allows services and systems to be reachable within the group. Public cloud is less secured, but enables the service and systems to be reachable to the general public. Hybrid cloud is a combination of public and private cloud in which the common activities are performed in the public cloud, and the secured activities are performed in the private cloud. Community cloud allows for the services and systems to be reachable by a group of organizations. After deployment models, let's go now to the service models. They can be categorized into three parts, and each of the models inherits the management mechanism and security of the former. Platform as a service, or PaaS, gives accessibility to use software applications for the end user. Software as a Service, or SaaS, 
gives a runtime environment for development of applications and others. Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS, is a basic level of services and gives access to the fundamental resources like virtual machines, physical machines, and a whole lot more. If you are planning to use cloud computing, there are different phases to consider as well as business requirements that need to be considered before deploying it to the cloud. These include one, budget, two, data security and privacy, three, attributes of the cloud, whether it's gonna be private, public, community, or hybrid, backing up the data, training, reports and dashboards, accessibility of clients, and how you export the data. So let's discuss the different phases to help you familiarize yourself more with the cloud computing. Let's go over strategy phase. This phase analyzes the problems that the user might see, and there are two steps for this analysis. One, value proposition. In this step, we consider the keys that influence the assets when applying cloud computing and focus on the problems they need to solve. These factors are simplify the IT management, cost reduction in maintenance and operation, innovation in the business, outsourcing hosting at lower costs, outsource hosting with high quality service. Now the strategy planning, this step will be based on the results of the analysis. The planning phase analyzes the risks and problems in the cloud to make sure that the customers are able to meet their business goals. It involves a series of steps such as development and business architecture where you recognize the risk caused by the application of cloud computing from a business point of view, the development and IT architecture where you identify applications that help the business process and the required technologies to address applications and data systems. Quality of service deployment refers to requirements that are non-functional like security, disaster reliability, business recovery, etc. Development in transportation plan refers to every kind of plan that needs to change the current business into cloud models. For the deployment phase, this is the last phase that focuses on strategy and planning phase. Now, there are two steps that are involved. First is cloud computing provider. You need to determine the cloud provider with a service level agreement or SLA. And this is the width on which the cloud provider will meet. And service in technical and maintenance. This is given by the cloud provider to ensure service quality. Now with all the different phases and steps mentioned, this should give you a clear background on how to apply cloud computing to your services. Achieving a reliable and flexible cloud means utilizing different technologies to support cloud computing platforms. Now we're here to make your work easy by listing down technologies that you can use as a guide. Virtualization permits sharing of resources or applications to different customers or organizations. Utility computing are basically needed services that gives computational assets on demand. Grid computing, it's a group of computers from different locations that are being connected with one another to achieve the same goal. And then we have service-oriented architecture. These assist people to use applications as a service to more applications, despite the product, type of vendor, or technology. It is possible to swap the data between different vendors' applications. There are two parts that make up the cloud architecture. First part is front-end which refers to the user interface or UI and applications that access the cloud platforms. For example, Google Chrome, web browsers, or even your Spotify. The backend refers to resources that are provided by cloud services. It also supports the front end. Cloud infrastructure contains storage devices, network, software and deployment, management in cloud software, servers, and platforms. Hypervisor is a low-altitude program that functions as a virtual machine manager. It shares physical instances of cloud between other occupants or customers. Now, there are constraints that should be implemented in cloud infrastructure, and these are the following. 
one, transparency, two, security, three, scalability, and intelligent monitoring. So check out these cloud computing tutorial links for more reference and information. Today's session was quite a lot. So let's do a quick recap of everything that we discussed. Earlier, we discussed the basics of cloud computing and how it can benefit your organization. Then we moved to discuss its different attributes, models, and phases, as well as some technologies to help you maximize its potential. In summary, cloud computing is internet storage where you store all of your data. It is user-friendly and saves you money and space. Now, that's introduction to cloud computing. Catch us again in the next session where we will be explaining Salesforce and how to implement it. See ya.